competition is good. Hey guys, Sean with Long One Honeymoon here. You know I love nothing more than fresh, hot, portable inverter generators. And we have two here today. And these are from Energizer. And these are competitive in more than one respect. They're competitive in terms of features, they're competitive in terms of performance, and they're competitive in terms of price. This little brother clocks in at around $600. The larger unit at around $1,000. So they're about half the price of the Honda and Yamaha equivalents. On the left is the Energizer Easy v 2000 p a 2000 watt class of generator that produces 1600 running watts of power. On the right, the big boy, the EZV 3200P, this generator can produce up to 3200 watts of peak power and 2800 watts of running power. And there's one other item we're gonna show you guys, and that is this, the parallel kit. And spoiler alert, the parallel kit works for you 30 amp people and you 50 amp people. Very nice, eh? So we're gonna start here with the EZV 2000P and it is started with a good old fashioned pull recoil start. It's got Carburetor control here, which you can of course open or close. You have a manual choke. And on the face of the unit, you will see some of the unique features. Uh, for example, this weather ceiling. You have a power on and off button. You need to have this on before you attempt to crank the unit. And next to it, you have the economy mode button. Ideally, you should usually have this off when you crank the unit, but then you can turn it on and it will throttle down the unit depending upon the power demands being placed upon it. And below you have three warning lights, the ready light, the overload light, and the low oil light. And yes, you can see this is Canadian because everything is in English and French for those pesky Quebecers. <laughs> and you see to the left here, we have a DC circuit breaker and a 12 volt power plug. Also a red reset switch in case the generator were to overload. On the bottom center of the unit, parallel port. And this is a proprietary pal parallel port. If you purchase the parallel kit, you could link really any two Energizer generators together that are in this series. In other words, you could link two 2,000 watt units together to 3,000 watt units or one of each. On the right, you have the two 120 volt 13.3 amp AC outlets. In the lower left, there is a spot where you could attach a ground cable that no one ever seems to actually do in the real world, but it's nice that it's available, isn't it? On the top, you will see where you add gasoline. I really like that the gas cap has a built-in vent. So you rotate it to on, and now you have a vented gas cap. There is no fuel gauge on the top. This unit holds 3.8 liters of fuel. And for those of you who don't have a metric to English calculator in your head, 3.8 liters comes out to a gallon. 1.0004 gallons. So with a gallon of gasoline inside, you can get about five hours of runtime at a 75% load. So that's actually pretty good off of one gallon. Of course, this is short enough in terms of vertical height to fit underneath a truck tonneau cover. It's light enough, weighing about 45 pounds, that an average guy can lift it and tote it around. All right, moving on to the big brother. Here we go, guys, the ceremonial first crank. 
setup of both of these generators was a little bit tricky. It's particularly complex with this guy because you gotta really open up three different panels. You open up one panel to add oil. They give you a basic little tool kit with each one of these generators and they include this little oil change funnel and container, which is, it's, it's a nice idea. I ended up using just a good old fashioned funnel. <laughs> the reason the setup for these generators is a little bit more complex than usual concerns the air filter. They want you to remove and soak the air filter, which is basically a sponge and clean motor oil and then reinsert it into the units before you use them for the first time. And that is a periodic maintenance item. You're gonna have to clean and soak that air filter. So it's a little bit messy and I had an issue with the screws that were holding in the air filter housing being torqued a little bit too tight. So I really had to kind of fight with it to get the air filter out of this unit. But with that aside, you add oil, you soak and reinsert the air filter and you connect up the battery. So you, you pop off this front cover and behind the cover is a battery, undo a rubber strap, pull the battery out, attach the power cables to the battery and then reinsert it. For the big boy energizer, the company actually sent me a spreadsheet comparing it to other 3000 watt class generators that we've reviewed. A couple of items stand out, the first being displacement. There's no replacement for displacement. Greater displacement engine really means more power and it has greater displacement than most of the other generators in its class. The other standout feature of the Big Boy Energizer involves the inverter control. The Energizer inverter board controls amperage as well as voltage. The Energizer shares this capability with the Honda, while the rest only handle voltage. And not only does this unit have a push button electric start, it also has remote electric start that's good up to, I believe, 100 feet away in distance. It comes with two nice little remotes. This unit is equipped with an automatic choke. The remote electric start really worked flawlessly every time we tried it. Yes, this means you can start and stop your generator while wearing your bathrobe. Beneath the electric start, you will find a switch that governs the economy mode. Note that the switch has a weatherproof cover. Again, you engage economy mode and the throttle will power down depending upon the needs that are being placed upon the generator. It'll get quieter and it'll conserve your fuel. Beneath the economy mode switch, we have the carburetor control. The carburant, as our French speaking friends would say. Il font du vélo. Il font du vélo. In top center, we've got our little warning lights. Uh, concerning output, overload, and low oil. We have a little reset button, and we have a really nice LCD display. You can see the run time on the unit, so it has a built-in hour meter. Top center, parallel port for the proprietary parallel kit. We have a 12 volt plug for the charge cables. Beneath that, we have a locking 30 amp plug. So this is not an RV ready outlet, but with the addition of a simple little $5 adapter, you can plug your RV straight up to it. We have a DC circuit breaker, an AC circuit breaker for the 25 amp and for the 20 amp. We have our 120 volt 20 amp outlets, two of those, and we have a spot for a ground wire. You can see that we do have a fuel gauge, which is a nice feature. Um, not all of these 3000 watt class generators include a fuel gauge, believe it or not. For example, the Champion that we own does not have a fuel gauge. Gas cap that contains a little filter inside to filter out any impurities in your fuel. This generator holds 7.4 liters of fuel, which translates to a couple of gallons. And they claim you can get six hours of runtime at 75% load. Both of these units run off gasoline. There's not, to my knowledge, any sort of propane option. This unit has a nice wheel kit, and on, on one side it's got an extendable handle. It actually is 
pretty heavy big boy, weighs about 96 pounds. It's a lot to lift. On one side of the top, there is a grab handle. Unfortunately, there's only one grab handle. I would like to see a second grab handle because it's a little bit awkward lifting this much weight with one handle, but if you have a good beer gut, you can probably squeeze it up against your torso and manage the sumo squat lift. It's short enough to easily fit under a truck tonneau cover. It fits under our tonneau cover with plenty of room to spare, so I was happy to see that. Although it's equipped with an electric start and a remote electric start, you do have a traditional pull recoil start on this side. Both of these units have a hard plastic case. I had a few issues getting some of these plastic panels to pop back into place after adding oil and soaking the air filter. So that was just a bit of an issue in setup. But I do think that the plastic seems to be a really thick, hardy, and durable plastic that will probably hold up pretty well to use and abuse. But the proof is in the pudding. We're going to next take them out into the field and see how they perform under load. With our Airstream, we conducted the usual battery of tests of these Energizer generators. For the first test, we wanted to see how the EZV 2000P would handle our Airstream microwave oven flying solo. And we also used a digital sound meter to monitor noise. We're just having some fun here. I'm not running a NASA research lab. What we have done is put a digital sound meter about 25 feet from the generators. We've oriented the generators such that the exhaust is pointed away from the meter. In deference to modern internet attention spans, we're gonna jump straight into the results. The EZV 2000P performed pretty much exactly like you'd expect from a 2000 watt class of generator producing 1600 running watts of power. It managed to power our microwave oven. However, our unmodified 13,500 BTU air conditioner was asking too much. All right, so as expected, the little guy overloaded trying to power the 13,500 BTU air conditioner. It did run the fan for a minute or two, but once the compressor really kicked in, it overloaded the unit, and you can see the overload light illuminated here, and there's a reset switch that you can push to reset it, but it's gonna immediately overload again. So there we saw it. Sorry, little guy, I was really asking too much of you. We measured noise by running a couple of different tests. At idle or low load, the 2000 watt generator clocked in at around 55 decibels of noise output. For heavy load, we brought in my wife's jet engine of a professional grade hair dryer, which draws 1800 watts. Next up is the big boy 3000 watt model. The EZV 3000P did a great job handling the reasonable power demands that we placed upon it. Most importantly, it ran our air conditioner with no problem whatsoever. So we devised a little torture test and ran the air conditioner and electric water heater simultaneously. So the engine speed is at 3400 RPM. So it's really having to work. That's a really heavy load. I had the water heater on, the air conditioner on, and also the refrigerator. So to overload it, I'm going to step inside and I'm going to turn on the microwave oven. And that will certainly overload. Too, that was too much to ask for a uh, 3200 watt generator. But it hung in there pretty good. <laughs> you can see the uh, overload light illuminated. 
So the big boy generator performed very well from a power output standpoint. Here I think we're seeing the benefits of the larger displacement engine and the inverter board that controls both amperage and voltage. With regard to noise, however, the big boy didn't fare quite as well as expected. And we found this to be the case at all different load levels. Our noise meter measurements came in a good bit higher than the manufacturer claims. Even under minimal load, the generator is producing around 60 decibels of noise, a good bit higher than the 52 decibels we expected. When in doubt, bring in the wife's jet engine of a hairdryer. expecting around 60 decibels of noise, but we got more. And this is a case where more is actually less, if you know what I mean. We also tested the parallel kit, and here the results were very good from a power output standpoint. Linked together, these units handled pretty much everything we threw at them. The parallel kit is very reasonably priced at around $70, so if you're gonna go the two generator route, it is a no-brainer. After a long, hot, and sweaty day of generator testing, what have we learned? The 2000 watt model is a very competitive entry in its class. It's reasonably quiet. I really like a lot of the design features like the weather ceiling on the face of the unit and the vented gas cap and especially the fact that you can run these in parallel. Of special interest is the big brother, the EZV 3200P. Now on paper, this looks like the ultimate generator. It's got a large displacement engine. It's got remote electric start. It has the nice weather ceiling on the face of the unit. It has an LCD display, which contains a multimeter, including an hour meter. It's got a wheel kit. It's got a fuel gauge. However, it's also got some noise. The bottom line is I ran our tests again and again and it consistently clocked in with higher noise output than I was hoping to see. As you know, I have a stash of 3000 watt generators and I dragged some of those out and we ran some side-by-side -side tests and my tests remained consistent throughout the testing. So either there's something off with my testing methodology, there's something off with our unit, or our expectations were not realistic and the numbers that we had received were not exactly accurate. That's all I can say. I just test them, I get the information, and I report that information to you. <laughs> So that's it guys, a look at these two Energizer generators. Shout out to Midland Power for sending us these units to show you guys. And if you want more information about either one of these generators, there will be a link, of course, in the YouTube description for this video. And these generators will be listed in our Amazon store. We have an entire portable inverter generator category in our store. Until next time, I'm Sean. This is Long Long Honeymoon, where we say lo, lo, ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. These generators have been designed in the land of maple syrup, oak leaves, and Justin Bieber.